Well, here we are, folks. A beautiful July, early July 2016. Mount Calvary Cemetery in the Rossendale section of Boston. And you're looking at the final resting place of the great fighter, John L. Sullivan. And uh, what intrigued me about him, I am a fan of the boxing, the sport of boxing. But I had a friend, Manny Aronis of High Park, the late Manny Aronis. Manny came to the United States as a very young boy. He ended up going to uh, Kansas City. And he was a club fighter. Also, he was Jack Johnson's towel boy. And mostly, he knew John L. Sullivan. Uh, by the way, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sullivan died February 2nd, 1918. Well, Manny was uh, quite, quite a young man and knew him well and while I can't prove it I could probably say that I shook the hand that shook the hand of John L. Let me just read a little bit about a little background about John L. from uh, the Find a Grave. Uh, first heavyweight champion of the world 1882 to 1892 John L. Sullivan was a true fighting man. He drank, womanized and proudly boasted he could look any man in the house. As an aside, there was a movie uh, about Jim Corbett, Gentleman Jim Corbett, I, was, I think it was called, and Ward Bond played John L. Sullivan in the movie. Uh, he was the first, for, first world heavyweight champion to wear gloves as required under the Marquis of Queensbury rules and boxing's first ever superstar, commanding combined purses of over a million dollars in the course of his career. Born in Roxbury, Massachusetts, which, by the way, is a section of Boston, October 15, 1858, Sullivan turned professional as a high-spirited youngster in 1878. He soon gained the nickname the Boston Strong Boy, and sometimes he was referred to as the Roxbury Strong Boy. Uh, he also was a, um, a friend of Mayor Curley, and he campaigned for him. Anyway, yeah, that's an aside here. Uh, uh, and so he was known as the Boston Strong Boy and used his brute strength to tear through the opposition before meeting Irish-born Patty Ryan for the Bare Knuckle Championship of the World in Mississippi City, February 1882. So fierce was Sullivan's onslaught that Ryan's corner threw in the sponge before the start of the ninth round, after their man had taken a sustained beating. Sullivan was now the champion and made his name fighting exhibitions across the land but he refused to fight any black boxer and drew what came to be known as boxing's color line he only defended his title twice in the next 10 years battling a 39 round draw with charlie mitchell in chantilly france in march of 1888 and knocking out jay kilrain in the 75th round in july of um, 1889 but the end finally came against Gentleman Jim Corbett, September 1892, in New Orleans. Sullivan outweighed Corbett by 32 pounds, and it was a 4-1 to favorite entering the fight. But he was old and tired, and the younger, more scientific challenger outboxed the old warhorse before knocking him out in the 21st round. Sullivan then retired with a record of 41-1-3 and with 33 KO. Sullivan drank heavily after that career-ending defeat but later lectured against the evils of alcoholism. He died in Abington, Massachusetts, which is a little bit south of us, near Brockton, the home of a couple of other great fighters, uh, on February 2nd, 1918. So a very modest little site here, and uh, nothing here marking his, uh, who he was. Just thought of an interesting, beautiful, beautiful cemetery here. And, but he at one time was probably the great greatest sports figure in the world.